So, uh, yeah, I'm Howard Abrams. I work at a company called Workday. We uh, went public last year, and um, but the company's been in existence for a few years now. And I just thought I'd kind of give you more of a, uh, a user's use case perspective um, on how we cloud at Workday. Um, we have an enterprise application for HR. And as such, we're really concerned about security to the point where it's really obnoxious to be a developer there. They have all sorts of stringent controls because we have things like uh, our customers and their employees, their social security numbers and salaries and all kinds of incriminating information. So each of our customers has to be in a VM and consequently we just put them in, we've been doing cloud for a long time. However, we do have a bit of a problem, like everybody does, and, uh, and this is kind of where we started from. We had a, uh, a private cloud built on uh, KVM, and uh, it was kind of duct taped together. Uh, actually, it was using Zen, sorry, but it was duct taped together with a lot of uh, shell scripts and a lot of tears from developers with their uh, late night personal uh, attention to these scripts. and. Uh, Late night personal attention means something completely different to a DevOps person, right? Uh, we also had a lot of chef recipes that we had hand-rolled our own. And um, yeah, and some of these scripts were thousands of lines long and required just pages just to explain how to run these things. So along comes uh, Carmine here, and he hired a bunch of us to kind of help make a reproducible private cloud. We wanted things like a, a, a business-specific interface to it, uh, make it, make our DevOps team happy. We wanted a very, what we call a promotable pipeline. I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, and then a lot of feedback that we could use to kind of improve things. And uh, since we started going, they started at adding more things to it. They wanted to, um, they, they had specific types of virtual machines. And as I, you know, we asked them, what do you mean by that? It sure sounded like flavors and images with uh, quotas. It's like, hmm, all right, sounds like a, we've got an idea here. Uh, they also had very defined limits and authentication and security. And then, you know, hey, well, we're asking for it. Uh, we want to support a lot of data centers with the same tools. And hey, can you support our existing scripts? And oh, hey, can you expand it for all, for all eternity? So we came up with what we thought was a solution. It's kind of a four-part solution. Now, these are not products that anybody else can use. It's just the code names that we gave them to kind of keep them straight in our own mind. Um, we began with OpenStack. We started uh, with the Swan to deploy it. We then created the OWL to uh, configure it. The Raven uh, was basically our API to it. And then uh, our monitoring metrics was our Dove. So the SWAN, um, this is just how we did a fully automated deployment of OpenStack in lots of data centers um, all at one time. These are some of the key features. We uh, were big into Chef, so we had to use Chef to install this thing. Um, we uh, started to kick out our old Chef scripts and use the ones uh, that we could get from Ops Code, and of course, uh, Rackspace's collection. And then we've added our own special sauce on top. Um, then we had uh, our Workday projects, which you know we had to have these continuously built and integrated and pushed out into production. Um, and yes, we've been looking very closely at Triple O for. Uh, a few weeks now, and it's like, we've got to start migrating over there. This is kind of our promotable pipeline. Um, when a developer checks in some code into Git, um, it goes through a build process, full testing using templates plus a lot more stuff. And if it all gets good, we push it into our um, repository, our gold images. The gold images gets uh, shoved over into the first of one of many environments in our data centers. And if uh, QA blesses that, we promote it on down the line from engineering to our staging environment, non-prod. 
and then into prod. And if that's good, we'll move it over to you know different data centers uh, that we have all over the world, and little by little push them out so that we can kind of have a workflow that keeps going. Next, we had our OWL. Uh, this is our, once a, an OpenStack is running, we need to have it in a state where we could now use it. So some of the features that we started uh, developing was you know, we start with a very well-defined configuration interface that we could override for particular environments. And yes, this too, we've been looking at uh, you know, the triple O. Uh, we wanted it item potent. Um, clearly, we wanted to just be able to keep running this thing anytime we needed to. And we wanted the configuration files such that we could put it under source control uh, for each environment. Allow us to do things like creating particular tenants and flavors and you know just all of the beautiful stuff. So what we ended up doing uh, for this particular project is we just wrote some Python scripts. We could use the Nova client library. Makes it pretty straightforward. Um, whoop, too fast, too fast. This is a little bit of our configuration file, just to kind of give you a flavor for it, um, that we could specify both the connection for a particular thing and then what we, we wanted to do with it, you know, set up a project. Um, or in this case, here's another connection that's in the same file, uh, but this one will be setting up the flavors. But the code, I mean, um, you know, hats off to the whole team. The code was very easy to use. I mean, slapping together some uh, nice little Python script made it a lot easier for us to handle as opposed to dealing with the REST client directly. Um, yeah, the only downside is, really, if you don't find it, you throw an exception? Really, is that a good thing? Next, we created our uh, Raven, which is basically a business uh, interface um, to the entire stack. It uh, kind of looks like this. We wanted to support lots of different DevOps teams using different types of tools, all of them coming through the same interface, but allowing that interface to configure multiple OpenStack instances all over the world. Well, once we started dreaming, we just kept on going. Um, we wanted a generic API. We wanted uh, one that was a hybrid that could work with both public and private clouds had to be restful to make it easier on ourselves, um, support JSON, but of course, in order for us to support some of these uh, shell scripts, we started adding other formats to it. So we, uh, we ended up using uh, Python Flask for it and uh, using the Nova client library. Once again, it worked out pretty well, and we were able to keep it all stateless, which meant we could get high availability for free. This is kind of the architecture that we came up with. Uh, clients on one side could push over to the API, which would then talk to one or more OpenStack instances. Uh, the code for it, if you ever decide to do it, is pretty straightforward. We could have one file that was uh, full of just routing information with some documentation. Um, this documentation here ended up something we could just spit right out. Um, so this is the API that actually comes out of our code. So any of the DevOps want to see what could happen, they could just go to this one URL and, and see all of the different uh, things the API could support. You know, it, we try to make it more business uh, oriented just for what we wanted for Workday. So we kind of started to bubble up things uh, to be very specific to what they do. And then underneath, it just calls the standard API. So this is just something that Workday wanted to have, a much more simpler, dumbed-down, very business-specific interface. So it, like I say, this is not something that you would do necessarily, or it's something that you'd take from us, but it's something that uh, some companies would want to run. Um, but it ended up working out pretty well that they could, oh, great, battery request, great. Hard to see that. Um, yeah, and so uh, just using the Nova client library, very successful for us, uh, that we could then render it into different ways and um, you know, just bubble up the information that we got from uh, the public cloud or uh, 
from OpenStack the way we want it, we could reformat it the way uh, the company needed it. Uh, we also didn't have to worry about asynchronousness. You know, uh, we could just have the clients pull multiple times, and that seemed to work out pretty well. And then uh, using Box Grinder, we could create different images for the different layers uh, for both the virtual machines and for the bare metal. Um, but yeah, like I say, the triple O we've been uh, playing around with because we really want to go over that way. Uh, the Dove is our project for monitoring feedback. Um, we had to uh, pretty much use the same Nagios interface that we already were using. We just needed to extend it uh, and then add Kafka so we could use it, get our logs. And in the future, we want to kind of start expanding that since that's a, a key feature for us. Now, if you're going to try doing some of this stuff yourself, uh, there's a couple of other tools you might want to look at that uh, uh, seem to work out pretty well. Mirantis has a project called Fuel. Um, it allows you to stand up a cluster on bare metal, um, kick off a whole bunch of integration tests to see if it validates it, and they have just a real pretty UI for it. Uh, it's all based on Puppet, and since that's what goes on the bare metal, we're um, until we can talk them into uh, converting over to uh, Chef, um, we're not able to use that at the moment. Uh, another approach, if you're going to try managing multiple uh, OpenStack instances, is uh, using Supernova. Uh, it, it allows you to, it basically has the same Nova CLI interface. It just, you, you can specify different environments on each command and that reads from a configuration file for the different connection properties. So you can say, um, uh, go to tenant one and give me a listing of all the uh, flavors and it'll use that kind of connection to get over. So some of the lessons that we uh, learned through all of this, um, yeah, OpenStack, definitely very good. Um, however, the tools move very fast, and for an enterprise company, that's a little rough on us. Um, we have to make sure that we can stay on the trunk, and you know, we certainly want to contribute back as soon as we've leveled up on it all. From a technical standpoint, uh, there's certainly a lot of rough edges that we've had to work around. Um, heat, almost, triple O, almost, a lot of good things that are almost ready for us to use. We've also had to rethink a lot of our assumptions, um, especially when it came to uh, networking. Um, yeah, it seems like every day we have a very sp particular way that we want our networking to be, and that usually is what you put into an OS. That's not always the case with OpenStack. Sometimes that goes over here. So we've had to do uh, quite a bit of leveling up in order to figure that part out. However, the, um, the scripts uh, were easy to build up with the APIs. Oh, and also one of the things is uh, all of our data centers do not have internet access. So <laughs> to stand up something like a dev stack just to see if it works, it doesn't. Um, because it just can't go out to the internet to go download any sort of uh, pip calls or yum or whatever. It just can't get out there. So we've had to figure out ways to do uh, offline installation. So uh, in summary, if you uh, decide to kind of follow suit on a you know the same kind of business process, uh, uh, definitely ch you know you can certainly use the uh, Nova client libraries. They've worked really well for us uh, to you know, enforce your own security policies, you can just kind of layer on top of Keystone. Uh, and then, you know, use Fuel or Supernova or something to do, you know, aggregate a lot of these different uh, interfaces. So, yeah, how about that? We can now finish off that beer we promised ourselves. Any questions? <laughs>